Welcome to the video. My name is Alexia and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today the Data Factory series continues. And today we are going to check out the script activity that is one of the most versatile activities in the Data Factory. Script activity allows you to execute SQL statements in different SQL databases. Currently, script activity supports five different SQL databases. And those databases are Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Dedicated Pool, aka SQL Data Warehouse, then it supports SQL Server Database, then Oracle Database, and finally Snowflake Database. Today I will use Azure SQL Database as an example and run SQL statements from the Data Factory using script activity to that database to demonstrate how the script activity works. So without further ado, let's jump into Data Factory and let's see how to use the script activity. Now we are in the data factory. Let's start by creating a new folder called tutorial 14 for our pipeline. Then let's create a new pipeline to this folder called PL tutorial 14 demo 1 script activity. Then let's add a script activity to this pipeline. Next, we want to open up the settings tab of this script activity and configure the linked service that we are going to use for it. And in this case, we want to use the linked service that I have created to this data factory that is pointing to the SQL database that I have in the same resource group with this data factory. So let's select that. For this activity, we do not need to create any data sets since we are just sending some SQL scripts to that database by using this activity and the linked service. So there is no need to create a dataset that would contain any metadata about this linked service. The second thing that we can configure with this activity is the script type. So is it going to be query or non-query? Basically, what is the difference between these two? The query will return some values when the script activity runs and makes the script activity to behave kind of like lookup activity. And the non-query activity is the opposite, so it won't return any data to the pipeline. Now we can test the script activity by setting the script type to query and writing a very simple SQL query by just selecting one as ABC. And now we can debug the script activity and see what happens. And our script activity already finished. And we can see that the output of the script activity returned the data that we defined in the query. So we have there some array called rows. And in that array, we have one object. And in that object, we have one key called ABC. And the value for that key is one. Next, let's run the exactly the same query. But now let's use the non-query option and see what happens. And our debug already finished and we can see that with this non-query option we didn't get that return value, that rows array that we got with the query option. Next, let's open up the SQL Server Management Studio quickly and let's create a new schema, a new table and insert few rows to that table so we have some data to play around with using the script activity. And let's go back to the data factory and let's start querying the data. Let's change the option to query and let's select everything from the table that we just created using Management Studio. And then we can debug this run and our debug already finished. And we can see that the output of the debug returned the rows from that table. So we have the John Doe and Jane Doe row there and also their ages here. So the script activity in this case behaved like a lookup activity to the database. And what is cool about the script activity that we are not limited to selecting the data only. We can basically do every SQL operation that we want using the script activity because the script activity will execute the SQL script in the linked service that we are providing. So for example, we can insert a new row to that table that we just created. So let's insert a new row where the name is Jack Doe and the age is 12. And then let's debug our run. Our run went through fine. And now we can select again everything from that script testing table and see that the row we inserted there went there fine. And our debug finished. And now we can see that our output returned three rows which means that we successfully added that one row to that table. Now let's check out few options that we have in this script activity. We could add some parameters to our scripts if we wanted to, and there is an option to add new parameters. And under the advanced block, we can find more options. Here we can specify the timeout in minutes when our script would 
time out. For example, it, by default it's set to 2 hours, so 120 minutes. And of course this value is adjustable and I would recommend you to adjust it according to your case. Lastly, here we have this enable logging option that would log some print statements that we would have in our SQL scripts. We could guide these logs to an external storage that is basically a blob storage that we have created as a linked service to this data factory. But in this case we don't want to do that. We can just log everything to our activity output. So let's select that. And now after we have enabled the logging, let's just add print ABC statement to our query. And now let's debug our script activity and our debug went through fine. And we can see that in the output of the script activity, we have a new property called output logs. And there we can see that ABC value. So we were able to successfully log that print statement to our activity output. And that is all that I wanted to cover today. Now you should have an understanding how to use the script activity in the data factory. If you found this information helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and data factory content. Now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.